Hi, I'm Ken Corain with Machine Design Magazine, here today with Rick Wood from Rollon, and he's going to talk a bit about linear motion systems. Rick, what are some of the issues today for users? One of the things we're seeing that uh, our customers are, the, the, the problems our customers are facing are um, issues surrounding alignment, assembly time, and uh, areas that really the associated components surrounding their linear motion systems are costing them a lot more than the actual linear motion, linear guide that they're using. So the, when you have a very precise mounting surface that you have to maintain, you have to machine it, you have to make it straight, uh, there's a lot of cost in the materials and the machining and the preparation to get that surface correct. So we're seeing that that's, and, and a lot of times they don't recognize that that's a cost driver and it's as in, in big a cost driver, almost bigger than the, the cost of the linear guide they might use. How about maintenance? Is that an issue today? Uh, maintenance has always been an issue. Again, you have to decide, are you, you're looking from the machine builder side or are you looking from the machine user? The machine user is always concerned about maintenance and how easy it is to maintain. The machine builder is looking at how do I, well, first of all, get through, you know, have a quality product that I'm going to provide my customer, but then how do I uh, make it through my warranty phase to make sure that I've got a, a product that's robust enough for the application. So between the, you know, the, the, you really in some ways have a competing interest in, in some cases you might think, but actually it's usually it's, it's a, a common interest between the machine buyer and the machine builder. Could you tell us a little bit about some new innovations? One of the things that we've got with the compact is in linear guide is you know, the standard high precision linear guide is really good for a high precision application, a high precision environment. So if you're machining something to a very tight tolerance, yeah, the, a, a standard linear guide is a really good solution. We have uh, our competitors are a competitive product and our, uh, the roll-on uh, K and U series guides. What's happening here is they're misaligned in the same amount, purposely, purposely misaligned. So this rail is four millimeters higher than this rail. This rail is four millimeters higher. And also the rails are towed in. It's, it's narrower up here than it is down here. So in this kind of alignment environment, if we were mounting to a piece of aluminum and didn't take care to align, we'd have a very stiff motion and it's very difficult to move. That's gonna result in a failure of your runner blocks as time goes on. However, the roll-on, it's actually a very light motion. So here we are, we're actually able to account for that misalignment by using the K-rail and the U-rail in conjunction. The K-rail gives us uh, uh, angular misalignment. The U-rail allows the uh, product, the, the roller to move in and out of the track, but it's, it can't be done in the same amount of force with the, with the standard style linear guide. So again, just as we, it's very easy motion versus a very hard motion. What we're just hoping to show is that if our mounting surface is not properly prepared, it doesn't work with a standard linear guide range. However, it does work extremely well with a roll-on compact rail. However, most of the applications don't require that high level of uh, technology and at high level of accuracy. So, we're t so what we see is, you know, if you just need to be plus or minus a half a millimeter, or plus or minus a millimeter in your travel, what you're going to what what you can use is our compact rail, which allows you to have a lower accuracy mounting surface, not have the binding from a misalignment. Your uh, assembly time is much less because you don't have a lot of uh, alignment and tweaking things in, making sure they're right and then you don't have the cost associated with a high precision mounting environment. So you can mount to plastic, you can mount to wood, you can mount to concrete, you can mount to sheet steel. It all depends on you know, what you're trying to achieve and the amount and the flatness and the smoothness of the motion you're looking for. What kind of savings can we be talking about? Well, you're going to see savings on assembly. You're going to see savings on materials. I mean, talking about a, a $20 piece of sheet metal versus a $200 of a machine base that's got some thickness and substance in order to manage the, you know, the, the, the cutting and the grinding and the heat temporization, all the things that happen in that, that machining. Um, so you've got a, it's actually, I mean, you're, you're talking a very, very large factor as far as the, the mounting surface and you're, but the guide, one guide to the other might be the same cost. So you, you got to look at the whole assembly and the whole uh, the whole ballpark of what you're, you're building in versus just 
just the, uh, the, the guideway itself. Now, you know, in applications like moving a door back and forth, a uh, guard and enclosure, mounting to aluminum, those are areas, I mean, they're just by their nature, they're very inaccurate mounting surfaces, but it's very important that they be able to move smoothly and very easily. The, the compact rail is an excellent choice for that kind of a motion. Because it can account for the misalignment? Because it account for the misalignment and also the, just the fact that you got a big door and it's a little flexible and it's got to have a, a, you know, maybe a little bit of binding because not everything is uh, precisely aligned in machine. So now we have a, a guide that can account for a couple degrees of misalignment, a few millimeters of motion in that same guidance, but also give you the, the smoothness and the ease of travel that you need.